West Hill United is a progressive spiritual community where how you live is more important than what you believe. West Hill United is a people, a place, an idea. We are a community living out of a progressive faith, striving to make a positive difference in our own lives, the lives of others, and the world. Join us Sundays at 10.30 a.m. or connect with us at any time. So, Teresa of Avila was a Spanish noblewoman who was called to convent life in the Catholic Church in the 16th century. A Carmelite nun, prominent Spanish mystic, religious reformer, author, theologian of contemplative life and of mental prayer, she earned the rare distinction of being, of being declared a doctor of the church even though one Vatican official called her as a restless wanderer, disobedient, and stubborn femina. Thank goodness there's plenty of ladies like that. He was basically offended that she was an author and teacher. Today's reading is a beautiful piece about living in gratitude. Teresa encourages us to live in peace and trust in ourselves and others settle into our bones and allow our soul the freedom to sing, dance, praise and love. She is calling us to embrace the zest of life and take pleasure in living gratitude. A quote from St. Teresa of Avila. May today there be peace within May you trust that you are exactly where you are meant to be. May you not forget the infinite possibilities that are born of faith in yourself and others. May you use those gifts that you have received and pass on the love that has been given to you. May you be content with yourself just the way you are. Let this presence settle into your bones and allow your soul the freedom to sing, dance, praise, and love. It is there for each and every one of us. Offered us wisdom for the journey. Amen. Maybe walk in its walk light. light. Mary Oliver's poem, Mysteries, Sorry, it's Mary Oliver's poem, Mysteries, Yes, invites us to revel in the mystery of life. Being grounded in life is being grounded in the mysteries of the universe. Oliver is reminding us about the potential pitfalls of certainty. Instead, the world is a mysterious and astonishing place, and that is a good thing. Mysteries, Yes by Mary Oliver. Truly, we live with mysteries too marvelous to be understood. How grass can be nourishing in the mouths of the lambs, how rivers and stones are forever in allegiance with gravity, while we ourselves dream of rising. How two hands touch and the bonds will never be broken. How people come from delight or the scars of damage to the comfort of a poem. Let me keep my distance always from those who think they have the answers. Let me company always with those who say, look and laugh in astonishment and bow their heads, offered as wisdom for the journey. Maybe May walk, walk, walk in his life. Thank you, John, for reading and on short notice. So it's funny, when I came across that, I was looking for readings to fit with this theme of gratitude, which actually had emerged from our wellness group this summer. And I came across this quote from St. Teresa Babila, And it was exactly as it was read a few minutes ago. 
and the wall hanging, it was a wall hanging, actually sold on Etsy for $9.99. And they attributed it to St. Teresa, and I wondered if they meant St. Teresa of Avila, at least in part because there were no references to God in the quote. And so I searched more closely, and I found that this quote from Etsy really was that ruthless disobedience, that femina, St. Teresa. And when I looked at the quote that I saw in another place on the internet, there were references to God. But whoever was selling it on Etsy for the low, low price of $19.99 just changed a few words, reminding us to have faith in ourselves and others, urging us to be content with ourselves, who we are. And I'm giving you this background partly for encouragement to remind you that you're not alone, that there's others who share our values and our ways of communicating them. But it's also interesting that you can remove references to the divine and the words don't lose their meaning. That tells us something. It tells us that we found something, that we found some deep wisdom. We found wisdom that goes deeper than individual faith and doctrine. The wisdom in cultivating gratitude and joy is more important than any belief or disbelief in one deity or the other. And I'd argue this with any Christian who embraces criticality. Life's too short to argue with fundamentalists and literalists, so I just don't. But anyone who came with any sort of openness to the mysteries that Mary Oliver described, I think they'd have to understand this. And the deep wisdom that St. Teresa offers us is that life committed to gratitude and joy is a good life. This isn't, isn't original. I'm not saying she invented gratitude. She's not the first one to talk about the importance of gratitude. So embracing gratitude is not original, but it's good. And so St. Teresa is wishing us peace, but she's also telling us that there's infinite possibilities born in the faith of ourselves and others, that in our relationality, through the web of life, the opportunity to give and receive love is there, and that we do well to celebrate that, let this presence settle into your bones and give your soul the freedom to sing and love for each and every strand in the web of life. I'm stipulating that gratitude and joy are noble pursuits. They're not the only pursuits. You must be mindful of justice and poverty and the health of the planet. But cultivating an attitude of joy and gratitude is grounded in life. And if a belief in a deity or an expressed disbelief in any deity helps you do this, then more power to you, but neither are necessary. But even as I'm stipulating a commitment to gratitude and joy, there are caveats. There always are. There's no absolutes. Life is a mystery. And one thing that we have found in the mystery is that context matters. And one of the challenges in fomenting gratitude is that there is so much suffering in the world and it's hard to be grateful. And some people's circumstances are so difficult and dire that they're simply unable to feel gratitude. And we must honor that. We must never force gratitude on anyone. And this crystallized for me a few years ago when in Regina, we invite, I invited Ted Gilletta to speak at our church. And Ted was a long, he's an Ethiopian refugee. He'd been living in Regina for many years. And, and so we wanted to speak about, we wanted him to come and speak about his experience as a refugee. And Ted is a very successful man and everyone admires him as a lo lovely guy. And he's a community leader and is deeply involved in community organizing. Everyone loves Ted, and Ted's very grateful for his life in Canada. But when he spoke at our church, he said one of the most difficult things reflecting on his experience was the idea of forced gratitude. 
Dad was always grateful, but he felt the pressure to express that gratitude even when the challenges of being a refugee were, overwhel were overwhelming him. He was not allowed to vent about the challenges of learning a new language or a new culture, not to mention the covert and overt racism. Ted was only allowed to be grateful, and this forced gratitude hindered Ted from expressing his full self. So we mustn't force gratitude on other people, but there's another trap of of, of, there's another trap we have to watch out for, which is the trap of dissatisfaction. Often dissatisfaction is born out of our desire for more. When he was the richest man in the world, Howard Hughes was asked how much he needed to be happy. And he said, a little bit more. But in so doing, Hughes was making happiness impossible. He was unable to express his gratitude for everything he had. And it hindered his ability to be happy. It didn't allow him to be fully alive. And dissatisfaction can run even deeper. And sometimes dissatisfaction is born out of an honest assessment of this broken world. We look around in the world and we see such incredible suffering. And even though I'm one of the few who have the privilege to be insulated from our world's harshest conditions, it can sometimes be enticing to live in dissatisfaction. There's a temptation when gratitude is expressed to point out the suffering in the world and to stifle any move to gratitude. But that's not helpful. Being constantly outraged, being only dissatisfied with existence is not helpful. It's harmful, actually. It's a move to innocence. And what do I mean by a move to innocence? Is that sometimes people feel that if they're always indignant, if they're always outraged, that it removes blame from them for the state of the world. That if they keep the suffering and injustice always front and center, that the suffering and the injustice is not their fault. This is a move to innocence and not really helpful because in some ways it's not their fault. We're caught in this web of existence and no individual is really to blame for the troubles of the world. But when we move to dissatisfaction, we are making it about ourselves. We are focusing on our status instead of focusing on love and action or making a joyful noise or gratitude. And one pl place where this practice of gratitude has emerged is in our weekly Zoom wellness group. It has emerged from the entanglement of vulnerability expressed and the vulnerability received in solidarity. In this group, people are free to express themselves as they need. The problems will not be solved by the end of the Zoom call, but they know they'll be heard and will receive solidarity. And that's what faith in yourselves and others can mean. And I remember one wellness gathering in particular, as we were sharing in vulnerability and love, we noticed that everyone in that call had a deep connection to caregiving. There are a couple people on the call who are sharing the challenges of being the primary caregiver of a loved one. And anyone who's ever done that knows how hard that can be, something you have to experience. And there are several people who had recent experience with that noble but difficult task as well. And there are others who are on the other side. There are others who are in the position of requiring to receiving caregiving. And they were appropriately grateful for the caregiving they received. And we were grateful for those who are offering care right now. And we are grateful for those who recently offered care to their departed loved ones. And this feeling of gratitude emerged. We are grateful that people were being cared for. We are grateful for the solidarity with those in the middle of such a noble but challenging task. And maybe some of us were grateful that such a noble and challenging task was no longer our responsibility. And that was entanglement. 
God is the web of life embracing healing in community. And gratitude emerged. Not because the problems were solved, but because we made ourselves vulnerable in community. We made ourselves vulnerable in the entanglement of the web of life. We can, and I think we must, be grateful before all the world's problems are solved. Yes, we must commit to love and action. We must work to end the suffering in the world, but we don't have to live in dissatisfaction. We can live in gratitude and joy. We can be grateful for life. Cultivating gratitude is being grounded in life. And we can find this gratitude and we can't really find it. We can find it in the mystery. Dissatisfaction withers in the mystery. Dissatisfaction lives in certainty. When we're certain, if we're certain we know what's wrong with the world and we can do nothing about it, dissatisfaction is a reasonable response. But when we truly acknowledge the mystery, when we admit that we live in the mystery, we know that dissatisfaction is not an authentic response. Because in the mystery is possibility. In the mystery is a chance for something new. And when, so when we live in the mystery, when we live a life of wonder, gratitude reaches out and grabs us. As Mary Oliver told us, truly we live with mysteries too marvelous to be understood. How can grass be nourishing in the mouths of the lambs? How rivers and stones are forever in allegiance with gravity while we ourselves dream of rising. How two hands touch and their bonds are never broken. How people come from delight or the scars of damage to the comfort of a poem. When we live in the mystery, gratitude opens up to us. When we live in the mystery, there is peace within. When we stand in astonishment and laugh out loud, we open ourselves to the web of life and its infinite possibilities that are born in your faith in yourselves and others. May you use those gifts that you have received and pass on the love that has been given to you. May you be content with yourself just the way you are. And let this presence settle into your bones and allow the, your soul the freedom to sing, dance, and love. It's there for each and every one of us. Beautiful, gracious life is there for each and every one of us. Let us give thanks and be grateful. Peace. Become a sustaining champion of West Hill United's work by committing to an automatic monthly donation. Learn more or donate now through Canada Helps.